Atlas Reactor is a game unlike any other. Tryon Worlds has managed to create something that's unlike any other game in the crowded competitive marketplace, and therefore, it just may well succeed where so many also-rans have failed. It also helps that Atlas Reactor is a hell of a lot of fun in its own right, with style and panache all its own. When I was first introduced to AR at its unveiling over a year ago now, I was excited by its look and the idea of a competitive team-based tactics game. When I was finally able to play it a bit later, I was impressed by its style and its bold new ideas, but it just didn't click. It wasn't until the beta phase, after several matches of my personal favorite, Oz, that's the little toy guy that you can play as, that suddenly I realized I was playing Atlas Reactor more than most games on my hard drive. The premise is simple. Two teams of four fight in a cover-filled arena trying to knock each other out. The first team to five knockouts wins, and the team with the most knockouts at the end of 20 turns wins, whichever one comes first. In the event that you both have an equal amount of KOs at the end of 20 rounds, you play until one team lands another knockout with the other team not landing another knockout, you know, sort of like sudden death. Now this would be overly simple in any other real-time game. If you put this in something like Call of Duty, it would be over in seconds. It would devolve into a simple brawl or button mash until the victor was crowned. But the combat in Atlas Reactor is turn-based, and each player only has about 20 seconds to decide what actions they're taking that turn. They have to communicate with their team members, or at least sort of try to communicate with their team members to see what they're doing as well, what their target is, where they're going, and who they should be aiming for. This, keep matches, this keeps matches pretty much always to 15 minutes or less, and keeps the action flowing at the kind of tense pace that'll keep your sphincter clenched shut between rounds. Now while I'd love more game modes, or simply even a 2 vs 2 or 1 vs 1 mode, the 4v4 matches we have at launch are pitch perfect. You can play with friends against bots, or solo with AI against bots, or you can compete in pure 4 vs 4 PvP. You can group and queue up, a ranked mode with its own rewards is coming near the end of October, and the season system of playing to complete challenges and gain rewards every few months is a good way to keep players working towards goals while doling out lore about the game world as well. Now if I can make two suggestions for gameplay additions, it would be a sort of challenge mode a la Duelist where players can take on story-based missions with preset goals and characters to defeat objectives. These could tell the stories we see in the seasonal lore and also have their own rewards. Plus, it'd be a nice break and way to learn tricks with different freelancers. Additionally, I think maps with a specific objective other than straight taking out the enemy team would be a welcome thing down the road. Not in ranked mode, surely, not in the esports thing that they're probably going for, but a defend and destroy the reactor mode seems like it could fit right in. Heroes in Atlas Reactor are called freelancers, guns for hire working for the highest bidder and their own factional interests. There's a good bit of story to be found, but it's mostly in-game via the season system, so a lot of it is yet to come and yet to be revealed. That said, each of the freelancers, from the toy Oz to the brutal Rask to the quirky Quark, have very distinctive looks and gameplay styles. There's literally something for every type of player, and you don't have to feel guilty if you're a fan of just one or two. You can level them up, unlock everything, and still be earning rewards for all the other freelancers at the same time. Now, Atlas Reactor is not a free-to-play game. There's a sort of unlimited trial where you can play the free rotation of characters, but ultimately you'll get the most bang for your buck and the most fun for your time if you spend the $29.99 on the full game. A key was provided to us by Tryon's PR, but we also paid our own way back in when the game was cheaper in its alpha phases. The trial is a smart move by Tryon because, frankly, Atlas Reactor is hard to grasp from watching videos. I mean, you probably do not know what's going on the screen in front of you. Or even playing a match or two, it's just not something you can pick up very quickly. You get the basics, but you really have no idea what you're doing. It may not click with someone right away because it's such a novel gameplay loop. Now there are additional loot matrices or loot boxes to be bought, and yes, they're RNG, but the contents are always cosmetic or XP boosting consumables known as GGs that boost the XP on each match for your entire team. You earn them by playing the game as well, and includes you earn the you earn the loot boxes by playing the game as well, so you never have to spend a penny to unlock all the collectibles in the game. Now Smite runs on a similar business model with its ultimate god pack, and it works well. It would be nice if one day Atlas Reactor would allow players to buy the freelancers piecemeal, but frankly, $30 for all the content here and all future content is not a bad deal at all. Now, therein lies the beauty. 
Atlas Reactor is something special amid a world filled with one too many MOBAs, team shooters, and card games. I truly hope it takes off like wildfire, though I fear it may be destined to be niche with its competitive XCOM flair and somewhat steep learning curve. Now once Atlas Reactor clicks for you, I promise you'll be hooked. It hits the sweet spot match length, has loads of replay value, and scratches the competitive itch like few games can. More than that, its community seems bright and helpful, the gameplay itself doesn't require 200 APM skills, and you'll succeed simply with quick thinking and careful tactics more than pitch-perfect aiming. Atlas Reactor is highly recommended. Give the trial a shot, let us know what you think. Our code, again, was provided by Tryon Worlds PR, but we also bought our way back in in Alpha. It was reviewed after playing over 200 matches between Alpha, Beta, and now Launch. Thanks for watching, this is MMORPG.com, and I'm Bill Murphy. Don't let a bad pug get you down. Make sure to level up your MMO knowledge by visiting MMORPG.com, subscribing to our YouTube channel, and by following us on social media. To catch up on the week's biggest MMO news, watch our latest MMO FTW. And to see if there's a better MMO out there for you, watch one of our latest First Impressions videos. Thanks for watching.